G'day everyone. Um, it's been a couple of weeks, um, but I'm back with some stuff that I've just finished. Um, now these fine looking fellows in front of you are Jacob's Rifles from Perry Miniatures. Um, I've painted them up as Jacob's Rifles, but you could paint them up um, as other Indian units as well. Probably make their uh, turbans uh, khaki or their trousers as well. Um, so, yeah, and they've got, um, I think there's 15 uh, guys on foot and one mounted uh, British officer accompanying them. Um, hold on a sec. I'll be back soon. Okay, right. <laughs> I just had to had had a delivery of some stuff I had to go out for. Um, <laughs> where was I? <laughs> um, Jacob's rifles. Yes, these are Jacob's rifles. Um, now what did they say? Fifteen. Yeah, fifteen uh, foot figures and one mounted colonial British officer. So you can imagine these guys up there in Royal Pindi or somewhere like that. Uh, Peshwa, somewhere like that. Ready to go off and fight the Patans. Uh, so, um, yeah, they're all metal. Um, I've had them, um, I, I think. <clears throat> um, I may have bought some of them myself. But I think some of them also... Perhaps even all of them were gifts um, from my family about three, at least three years ago, probably longer than that. I would say definitely longer than that. But um, yeah, they were gifts and they were part of my, when I was doing my 28 mil colonial project. And so they'd sat in their <laughs> little blue boxes for three years in a at least and um yeah if you remember my pre those have seen previous videos will see that i've painted um a number of other colonial units but i hadn't got round to these well i'm not actually i i thought well they're in the pile of opportunities and um in my drawer i thought i'd like to paint them but i've wanted to paint them for a long time because for, for me i'm you know like a number of other uh youtubers out there there's a a group of us, I guess, who 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 paint far more than we ever game, or if we game at all. But uh, we enjoy painting war games figures and collecting them and 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 whatnot. And um, that certainly I've gamed. Um, I certainly have war gamed. But uh, these days, I'll, I'll be fortunate if it's once a year, <laughs> once perhaps twice a year. Um, uh, but that's fine because I I really enjoy the painting. Um, painting side of the hobby a lot um so yeah I, I painted up these guys great fun um as always you know excellently excellent little sculpts from the perrys um so what can i say about them i'll, I'll go over some of the um this will be a slightly longer than perhaps than some of my previous videos just recently they've been a bit shorter but the, the, these guys, um, I'll try and give you a little bit of info on skin tones and stuff because um, people tend to like to know that sort of thing, particularly, you know, for painting um, guys from the, the Indian subcontinent. Um, well, how I've done it anyway. And obviously there's a lot of variation of skin tones throughout India from, from north to south, from quite sort of lighter coloured skin to quite darker um, probably in the south, uh, and a mix. I guess there's a mix between castes. Is there as well? I don't know. I don't know enough about it, but I just know there is a there is a lot of variation because a lot of different people groups have been in India. Um, yes. So there they are. Now, oh, I have to say these guys. I'm going to put them up for sale because I I as I said that 28 mil project. Um, I I sold the bulk of what I had already 
Um, I've still got some stuff that I would like to paint up um, from that. Um, I think there's a mountain gun, I think, and there's some other figures and stuff. So long term, I would like to get those painted as well. But they are going to be for sale because um, I have a whole a whole uh, bunch of um, 20 mil metal <laughs> colonials um, from New Line Designs that I bought because the idea was that when we moved house and things, there was less space that I was going to go down in size. So, but I haven't painted those up yet, those 20 mil guys. So it was just heaps of fun painting these and these are going to go up for sale. If you want to buy them, um, I'll put my email in the description. Unless, you know, it's one of the guys that I, who's been in touch with me over the years. Um, you already know it. <laughs> but... Um, but yeah, I'll put it down in the description. So yeah, uh, don't ask me what postage will be because that depends on where you live and how you want it posted. Um, but yeah, if at that if that doesn't work out, I guess I have to put it on eBay, which I'm not really keen to do because it's a bit more hassle and they take their cut and whatnot. But anyway, these will be for sale. Um, so um, right, skin tones. So yeah, um. Those who follow me know that I tend to paint. Uh, I paint over a uh, light grey undercoat, a greyish green, um, and then with skin, I I start with a base colour of a a red oxide or red earth um, acrylic ink um, as a kind of a starting wash or just to get a base colour in on the skin, and then over that, um, once I've blocked in all the other basic colors on the figure and um, then the whole figure gets um, a wash um, mine's a mongrel wash of <laughs> it's mostly an old one called sewer water probably with some other stuff thrown in but anyway <laughs> that's not really relevant um, you could use agrax earth shade or strong tone or whatever it is that you use to whatever degree you want to use it and however much you want to thin it down or whatever but anyway then there's a wash layer and then right first Tones. I'm just re going to reach over and so find the colours that I use. What have we got there? That's not great. Okay. Then, and I'm not saying this is right. I think you could use other tones for sure. Um, I used mahogany, uh, Vallejo model colour mahogany brown. Um, and then the next layer was red leather. Then after that, uh, I went up to bronzed shadow from Reaper. And then the final highlight was bronzed skin from Reaper. Now, um, often I use... There's, this is actually part of a triad, and there's a third one, uh, bronze skin highlight or some such thing. But actually went, did it. This this was my sort of solution for it. So yeah, I think it I think it, it looks pretty good. I'm quite happy with it. You, you could certainly go lighter, um, or even darker, or, or have more brown in it. But this is what I went for. So just my thoughts on it. Um, now. For the uh, the red trousers and the green turban, um, I started with, I actually established the base colours using some Vallejo Express colour. Um, I'll just grab them over here on a shelf. Uh, um, I used, um, what is it called? Lizard Green just to block in the green. So that's a Vallejo Express color. And I used uh, Velvet Red to block in the trousers. So then, um, then that got, that got a, a, my brown wash over it as well. So it quite, it deepened the recesses even more and it toned down any of the sort of more 
Uh, I mean, and that, those aren't any by any means the brightest sort of express or, or contrast style colours you can uh, of those sorts of shades. Um, so they're kind of duller anyway, but but yeah, I dulled it down even more with the brown wash. Then I've gone back in over it again and I'll just grab the colours that I used to bring it back up. So I used uh, for the green, I used um, this uh, Reaper colour called Leaf Green to um, on the highest, higher sort of areas on the turban, turbans, yeah, Leaf Green. And then for the trousers, um, brought the higher sort of areas back up with this one from AK third gen range called Brick Red. Now, I, I think the name is a little bit, I, I it's not what I think of when I think of Brick Red. When I think of Brick Red, I think of something that's more moving towards a, a brownish kind of cast a bit more. I think this is... Yeah, it's a good it's a good red though. I think that's a pretty good red actually for um, British red coats. Um, that's just my personal opinion, but it worked really well for these because I didn't want it to be over the top red or over the top green. You know, um, I thought that that was a good one. And for your for the overall um, the jackets and stuff, they are um, yeah Vallejo uh, model color khaki. Um, and then with the wash applied and then brought back up with khaki, um, the bread bags and such are sort of like, like a deck tan mixture, um, mostly, um, I think I had a, a couple of different co colors on my palette and I was sort of mixing on the go. Um, and then, um, the, um, leather straps and, and, and pouches and, and whatnot that, um, most of that is, um, that's leather brown um I highlight it up a bit and then they've got a little drinking sort of gourd thing there um i think that's painted with uh model color flat earth and um yeah and you've got an officer on the horse um just a bit of a dark blue on his I think there's a mixture of blues and other things mixed in. But yeah, I highlighted his leather up a bit, an extra, probably an extra level, just to pick out the edges and stuff. So yeah, pretty pleased with how they shaped up. It's interesting, I was <laughs> trying to pay attention to horses up the road, looking at the horses in the horse paddock. There's about three of them just up the hill from here and looking at the the socks and the and so how some don't have socks and some some the black that's on their legs doesn't necessarily go all the way up and that it just yeah there's quite a lot of variation um is that a little bit of is that a tiny chip don't you hate that i'll have to touch that up I definitely will touch that up <laughs> oh it's something gets revealed when you put it in front of the camera, doesn't it? But yes, um, all got tufts on them. They're all been uh, varnished with matte varnish, uh, ultra matte. Uh, yeah, so I reckon they, they're quite a striking uh, wee unit, actually. Um, I, now, they were, they're based for um, in such a way that they're, rather than being on 25 mil rounds, I've got them on 20 mil rounds for the foot figures so that you can get a decent firing line. Um, so you can spread them out if you want for a more open order, or you can have a decent sort of fire line, firing line if they're quite um, that smaller footprint base, um, 20 mil rather than 25. Um, so my original idea was to use these for many would-be kings, but you could use them for that. You could use them for, uh, uh, there's a, um, there's colonial versions of uh, sharp practice, um, oh, any number of things you could use them for. So there you go, guys. Um, thanks for watching. As I said, um, I'll put my email in the bottom if you want to drop me a line, if you're interested in them. Um, they'll probably come, you know, first come, best dress, whatever, whoever 
gets in and whatever. Um, I mean, personally, it'd be easier for me if it's someone in Australia or perhaps New Zealand, but it doesn't have to be. Um, and, um, yeah, and, yeah, feel free to ask me questions over email and I'll, I'm not I'm not going to give a price, but suffice to say, it's le it's less than what I normally charge for commission rates, quite a bit less, actually. So, because it's from my own, um, I mean, you know, I'm, you're not getting charged for the figures, that's for sure, because they're from my own um, pile, pile of uh, unpainted stuff. <laughs> um and the painting rates will be at less as well. Um, anyway, enough of that. Um, thanks for watching. Um, I those some of you may have seen my community post that I put a while back about that I was thinking of getting into building and painting uh, Perry Plastic Napoleonics, <gasps> which kind of goes against some of the things I say about how I don't like building plastic figures. Anyway, I'm going to do it. I do it because I want to do some Napoleonics and these are probably the cheapest option um, for getting into them and painting them up and um, again some of those I'll make them available uh, if people want to buy them um, and I'll probably do like smaller units maybe groups of eight like uh, I think I've got on order I ordered uh, French Czars British Light Dragoons, British Infantry Box, and the French Infantry Box, all that could, theor yeah, work for, um, like, the Peninsula War or that sort of era, whatever. Probably right, right through, I suppose. Um, so that should be fun, and I'll, maybe I'll do a video when they arrive. Who knows, they might arrive today. I don't know, they can't be far away. So anyway, guys, <laughs> so yeah, you'll be hopefully seeing some Napoleonics from me as I try and wrestle with putting those together. And um, yeah, I'm kind of looking forward to it. You know, I can pick different Hussar units to paint and, and uh, light dragoons with a Tarleton helmet and stuff. And um, yeah, it should be a hoot. And um, hopefully I'll be able to share what colour ideas I've been using or what units I've chosen to paint and references perhaps and things. So it could be fun, should be fun. And hopefully you'll stick with me to watch that. All right, guys, I'll catch you later. Um, I've taken a couple of pictures of these. Um, yeah, I don't know, three or four. Um, I'll put them in the end. Um, thank you for watching, and I'll catch you in the next one. Bye.